huge slabs that are coming in. Well, they're they're mats, so they're tied together with uh, with cabling. Yeah. Uh, so when they bring them off the truck, you'll see a big mat, but it's a mat that can that can be shaped to uh, fit contours. So I'm just wondering about the size of it. Does it have to be craned in? Is it, is it, uh, is usually, it you know, usually they're size so a um, uh, an average uh, front end motor. Okay, so, off the truck. so you don't need a crane bringing these big chunks in. We don't anticipate that. Right. Right. All right. Uh, ultimately, it's the contractor. Okay, I've got it right here. Thanks. I haven't seen this yet. Uh, ultimately, it's the, the contractor's responsibility yeah. to determine how they're going to place the material and what equipment they use. We can't tell them what to use, but we've seen we've seen crane work and we've seen. But it can be done on a front end motor, not yeah. necessarily yeah. have a big crane sitting here for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, no. so, yeah. So uh, another thing that you will see on drawing C3 uh, is a little bit of a modification to the, the stairway. So right now, uh, if you flip back to C2, you see the existing stairs and the, the concrete that heads down the, 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 uh, the north side of the embankment. Um, what we're doing here, proposed conditions on sheet C3, is our ultimate goal here is to have as few uh, structural penetrations through the ACV as possible. Uh, wherever you have a break in the ACV or you have a penetration of the ACV, uh, that's a chance for failure of that ACV. So we want to minimize the amount of um, punch throughs or penetrations that we have through that material. So in an effort to do that, we've shifted the stairwell or the stairway over towards the building, so it's sort of abutting the, the building, and can be supported by a tow wall that we're showing between the two corners of the building. Uh, you see sort of a couple dashed lines that are running yeah. diagonally between those two corners. That's a tow wall that's, number one, going to send any flow that may come over the embankment away from the building, but it will also serve as a structural support for the stairwell. stairwell. <coughs> Excuse me, the top pad on that is that at elevation 1479, or is it sloped as it's showing in this diagram? So, the so this is a first off, we're, we're planning on doing this this stairway and this walkway out of, out of uh, timber, so it's a, it's a wooden this will be a, like a wooden platform on top, and it's coming off at 1479, and it's Roughly flat until you get to the stairs and then it drops down. Okay, and so that's timber. Correct. Okay. Is there a roof on it? Right now, we do not have a roof. We looked at costing options for a roof. Uh, I don't remember the exact numbers, but they were, uh, it might have might added like six or seven grand to, to add a roof to it. It was seven mm -hmm. or eight. This is and on the was edge of our property. Yeah. This is where high schools form. This is going to be a hazard without having a roof, without having anything supporting over the top of that. That's going to be a hazard. If you would, it's going to last one year. To the building right. and, and put it an awning over the stairway? So we, we looked at that option and we shared uh, that alternative. I think you had seen it, maybe Jim had seen it. One of the things that became clear when we added that, that roof is that the roof line went right in front of some of the windows there. So aesthetically, we, we also didn't think it would work as well as yeah. the, the cost associated with that. The, the cost, I, the other issue that I thought there was, was with the tow wall and the, the instruction, what we would have to do with the tow wall because of the weight of that also. Is that a controlling factor? Uh, not as. Most of the increase in the cost associated with that alternative was the addition of the, the actual the actual. Itself. So going in front of the windows is is that an well, issue? We have to find something to work. Okay, the other this option. Work, we, so. What windows are there? I'm trying to yeah, his back windows. 
the athletic center, you know, when you or the Nordic center? Nordic center. When you walk all the way to the back and there's the TV. Oh, so it's on the back wall. Through the window. There's a couple of windows on the back windows. Those windows would probably have to go. So we, we got a drawing here now, too. Yeah. The, the other thing that we threw out there was the potential for um, gutters and getting the, the, the runoff from the roof away from. Seth, you see this drawing? No, I haven't. Yeah, it doesn't look very really good. That's just a quick hand sketch. Oh, well, we have the elevation going up. Uh, that's a previous Pre iteration of the of the wall. Well, it gives an idea. To well, it does. Where it does windows. for cutting across the windows, though. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't because you would be you're cutting across two of the back windows. That if you drop those first set of staircases, you would bring that level down far enough where you'd be cutting the first window out, maybe half of the second window, and the basement windows. You see the elevation. Your first set of stair stairs that come up would still be. Cutting in front of that window. Uh, so this this is coming across uh, this wall. Straight. As so here. these these are in flat. Right, but we're looking at this roof line here. But but what it's going to do when we cut that straight across is the roof instead of the stairs cutting across those windows, the roof is going to cut across. So all those windows are still in play. Just the so no no but but what we're talking about if we go straight across here. Then this this comes down, and those are going to cut. So there's the two, cut the two windows on the back, which is what I expect. Right. There's, there's two there's windows, two windows on, the on the back of the Nordic Center. Would yeah. Have to go away. There's there's two windows okay. on the back, and there's two windows on the the, the perpendicular side uh, facing. Them. I would like to see if we took that elevation out because those those two windows on the side were the offices. Those two office windows right there. Um, if you took that first incline out. You, I think you'd drop below those two windows with the roof line. The roof line is, is going to be six, seven feet above the, the elevation of the stairs. And we're still going to be the same, still going to be the same elevation here um, with the stairs, whether or not we come out straight and then go down or if we go up and then go down. This is, this is going to remain constant. So you're still going to be cutting across these two windows with the roof line. So what we're what we're talking about is that this up and down doesn't isn't in play anymore. If you're going to have a platform that goes across. But your platform in the corner is what you're saying, right? The platform, the platform in the corner, 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 corner. elevation. Well, and it's corner. not the platform; it's not the stairs; it's the roof okay. above that well, platform. Just so you guys know, all four of those windows, two of those windows are offices, and the other two are behind a TV, so they don't really mean anything to us. That the roof does mean something to us because the roof protects the, the people from getting hit by anything coming off the roof. It also protects the staircase. Do you envision people using the staircase in the winter? Yes. I would envision people using the staircase. Nordic Center enters and exits out of that bottom. Okay. The, the no, no, I'm just asking, do they use it now Not in the winter? I don't, uh, I don't think they use no, a whole lot it, of it. Yeah, um, but there are people that come and go. We yeah, get our no, firewood no, no, through, no. That, through down there. Um, gutter system above, does that solve anything? And let me, let from what I know of gutters that. in our area, we don't have success with gutters. Okay, so have. so I have in Lenny's house, you can go look at this. I had um, a cable system put in, and in the front of his house is the only place he has a gutter. And what they did is when they <coughs> ran it down the valley, they just ran it right through the gutter. So the water comes down and it goes over to the downspout and out. Yeah. It doesn't drip on the front porch. Anymore. Can I ask a dumb question here? I don't know if this is probably more expensive. What about extending the roof line down? 
Yeah, I'm fine with that. Sense? I think that would be better than that's the back two windows for that. Uh, the con the conference room, yeah. but uh, and you'll still have kind of that weaving edge of the no, that's a yeah. blue moon. Sorry, that's yeah. the back of the blue moon, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I would just think the building would look better if that was done. Then you have a little bit of a problem down at the bottom there, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know. I, this, this is all just getting thrown in about that chance to process. Have, have you had any yeah, luck? Same have you had any luck with the, the heat coils? That you can That's run? what we run now. Yeah. We run heat coils, and as soon as they fail, if, if one heat coil goes out, something fails on it, it grabs the gutter, rips the gutter down. We should certainly want to avoid any ice damage. Sure. I just want to avoid the hazard. No, we want to make yeah. something that's sustainable, having yeah. a surface out in the open elements. If we are going without a roof, if we find some other solution, I highly suggest going with galvanized and a kind of kind of concrete pad on the flat linings if we can, or something that's more robust than a than a wooden yeah, structure. Yeah, eaten away. It's just going to get eaten away. We could go with galvanized with just the. It, it, with anything, it's a trade-off cost versus. Oh, let's look at some options. I don't think we're going to solve it today. So we have we're taking out a concrete slab staircase. Mm -hmm. We want to at least have what that is. Oh yeah, you have to have something that's reliable. And it's you know. Yep. Well, and it wasn't anywhere near the drip line, so no, we're yeah, it was not a yeah, that was correct. issue. So, well. We'll take a reevaluate. Yeah. Anything else on the on C three that we need to review? Uh, just just to note that um, th there are some existing cobbles and you know, if you really call them riprap, but on the uh, the pond side of the embankment that will be removed and then replaced uh, after construction and, and, um, and that'll maintain the protection of the toe of the of the, the uh, embankment on the pond side. Um, as I mentioned, we're, we're trying to maintain as much of the existing topography as possible out here. Uh, so when you go back out, the, the brick walkway will be replaced uh, at the same elevations and uh, using the same material. That the brick will be placed on top of the ACB. Uh, same with the nine inches of loam and seed that will be placed on top of the ACB. We thought about selling bricks with people's names and having to pay for this. <laughs> no, no, people do it as a fundraiser. Maybe we can put a fundraising thing together. And... I, I agree. Yeah. All right, through the C3. Right, through C3, and the, I think the next sheet you have there is the location of the uh, temporary crossing. Yeah, the, the um, so there's a couple of things on this map. Um, the dark rectangle down along Snowsbrook that you see um, is the proposed location of uh, a crossing. Um, for Snows Brook. It is in the general location or in the exact location where the old bridge used to be. Um, it is 290 feet from Snows Brook Road to that site um, where the crossing would be. How far was that? 290 feet. 290. And if you cross over there, is it possible to then walk? Um, along that path. That's the end of the path that goes below yeah. Legends. Correct. It goes actually by the snowy. But on the and other and side, will you be able to walk? Well, along that's that path? that's something that, that, that we've up. discussed with Matt yeah. is access to that site. Um, we, if if you take a guest coming out of the front doors of Golden Eagle and you put them in the turnaround, 
how do you get them from there to this site? And notice the path that comes down from the backside. It's the old fitness trail. Mm -hmm. Is that, mm -hmm. So how I, I didn't walk up it because I yeah. wanted to get the this. The fitness trail runs on the other side of Snow's Brook. It runs down to Calvert under over Mountain Brook. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, but you got to get them to that path. Well, they would come down is, the back. There is a back path. Yeah, they come out the arches, heading towards the beach, and take a left, as opposed to coming straight across. But are they going to be able to do that? No, they can't. Why? Because you can't come out of the back door. Can't come out of the back. Okay. Well, there will be there will be an open spot for fire egress, but that will that so there's going to be no path from there will be no down path. across that's the right. square. So, there, so what I'm saying is, it's from going uphill side. I guess it's the old fitness path. There's a path with the railing that goes down all the way up to the Golden Eagle. I just don't know where it connects to the Golden Eagle. Uh, it, right the path, not the one that comes to the pond. There's, there's a, a path a with the railing that goes yeah. up to the back of the conference center. Yeah, that's right. right. The North Star. Is it the yeah, North Star? Yeah. North Star. Yeah. Which so is in how, very does bad that, shape. how does that get down to this path? To, that, that to, the, to the crossing? Yeah, yeah that comes it right comes down. Right the, the, this is at the, the intersection. Yeah. This is at the end yeah. of the trail behind Snowy Owl. And this is at the where that pathway from behind athletics um, conference center, center drops you on to the cross country trail these are right. this is at the exact intersection so golden oh, okay. eagle. but there's so, a one from the golden eagle from the golden eagle to right. that little path from the conference center down. does that go through the playground no no no, no. Not the playground by its back no, field, the one no, behind no, the, not the playground. I know the path that you need, yeah. so I've gone up that so, path through the playground. As long as we can move a yes, as long as we can move a guess from the Golden Eagles easily mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the end of this crossing, yep. Yep. then I think there's trail. then I think it's worth uh, the snow. Okay. My problem is. So you're saying that you can go there is something back you can go I know either this. So you go out here, and this and then you get the Yeah, I know you can go there. Yeah. How, how do you how do you get them from this is here so that or here over yeah. here? Yeah. Um there there yeah. is a path and it is very informal. It runs yeah. right yeah. here. Yeah. 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 Skirts, it's right. I just walked into the skirts. There's a path that goes, and I know the one that goes. I know this is that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is. This is the trail. So, anyway, it goes through here, and it has a railing that comes all the way up here. I don't know if it starts back here or here, but it starts on the railing. There's the one that's crossing the crossing. Yeah, this one doesn't have any railing on. When I was walking on the, the right. cross country path the purchase, I looked For, up yeah. and there was a railing. I think we're pretty sure. I think everything is down from here. I don't want to talk about it. I, 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 I picked the spot I because that's where everything comes together. Number two, if we can, it's about the flattest, the easiest place to go across. My concern is putting a lot of resources into doing this right now and then not being able to get a guest there that's and, and that's I all i'm also saying also tell you that path down to the conference center is in horrible shape mm -hmm. well yeah well, there is a road yeah. railing there but yeah. but it's a yeah. to have and it is a mess so what we're looking for is people have to walk out of the golden eagles to the conference center and down right <coughs> that's Because when people are coming out, I just don't know if it's going to be worth it if it is difficult to get the guest to the crossing. Mark, I, I think it's worth getting that crossing back into the town culture. Any crossing, because we sorely miss that as far as going from the fitness trails and hiking trails. People have been landlocked without being able to take that shortcut out. Right. So I think any place we do it is going to be good. The question that I would have that hasn't been brought up yet is if it's over here, the snowy owl, this lets you out to the end of the snowy owl. The old one, I think, lets you out right over here by the side of the pool. It was down by number 13 so, on, on our greatest hits list here. Okay. Where it really didn't intrude on the on the snowy owl. So the snowy owl is going to have some say in this, whether they want 
to allow all this traffic coming through the backyard. But before it kind of, you came out here to the trail and you were just, you were able to get on the hiking trail on the backside of town square. Isn't, the, isn't the trail though that's behind the snowy hall and, the, and uh, behind our buildings, isn't that on Greenbelt? Yeah, but I'm also thinking what kind of stuff is going to be stored in equipment behind here down during the construction. I don't think this is going to oh, be an unencumbered you, area. It's how to get back into town square yeah. because that's the other part. They're not going to be able to come back to the dam on that trail on the mm -hmm. on the other side of the of yeah, the yeah. So this, they're, they're going to have to those, come through. But that's going to be a no man's land. Yeah, it comes between Brookside and, yes. and mm -hmm. uh, Legends yes. and goes right up where but the climb wall is. On, we're, we're not doing this crossing permanent. Well, we, we're not going to take it down until they absolutely make us, I would think. What does it cost? Um, it'll. It, you you're going to have to do three, you have three pipes running through there. Yeah. Three you're pipes, gravel. Covering. Oh, we're not doing a bridge. We're doing culvert. Oh, we're right. doing a culvert. Yeah. If we do a bridge, they want two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a bridge. Yeah, yeah. Good. Same we're, kind not, of permit we're not goes. doing it. What? Well, the, yeah. All the above. It's going to have to be the same type of thing yeah. as the, as the pedestrian, pedestrian bridge. bridge. Oh, oh my god. god. We, yeah. <laughs> 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 we've been fighting on this for ten years. In, in order to get a permit permit to do it. I don't. I okay. We will try to leave it there, but I don't want to tell people that. No, we're, because this room, I don't think anyone's this, going to tell anyone. This is designed to fail during designed, a high yes. water situation. Right, and it is. It is designed. It will be part of a wetlands permit for this project, and it will be a temporary crossing. Okay. And the contractor will be required to take it out before the end of the project. That just like we did when we put the pedestrian how, bridge in. How high above do we have to get to get out of the wetlands? How far up above the river do we have to be out of the wetlands? Well, that would take that would take out. We don't yeah. know because what I would suggest is I've, uh, let's abandon the idea. It is going to come out of the project when we're done, and maybe we can talk about alternatives later. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, because we're on the public Good point. Yep. But, but wait, did you have a cost? Mm. Uh, I, I would say somewhere between fifteen and twenty-five thousand. Yeah, uh, crossing. It's not oh, temporary um, crossing. Temporary crossing. Temporary. And that, crossing. And, and that would be lost in high water, 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 water because it's yeah. going to be designed that pretty much designed yeah. that way. And we did lose we did lose the crossing during yeah. the pedestrian bridge project. We had to go back in and rebuild it once because we lost it from flooding. So. It's it's not cheap, and I'm just I'm just questioning for everybody to discuss: Is this worth the amount of money that we're going to spend on it? And are you really going to get people to utilize it? And are we going to are we going to be able to well, get people to it? And uh, like you mentioned, that it was sorely lost though by the community, correct? Yes. Oh, oh, definitely. I think it's it was a big part of our trail system, and a big part of. Uh, the people that lived on that end of town and the young families would take their kids on the bikes and know that they didn't go up, have to go up the big hill to get here, they could cut across. It is, it's part of the interconnectivity that we have for walking and biking that I think is really important. Well, it was also very popular when we had um, conferences, associations especially. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the main thing in town square. Yeah. They'd cross that bridge right. and go up to the conference. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we thought it would be. It would be in place from October. Chapter one, but maybe a quick walk through that area to make sure it goes in a place that's conducive with the pack. So it's easy, easy walk. There aren't any too, there aren't too many tough inclines for people, especially when we see the women with the high wheels. Right. Yeah, you know, that's what, what that's what I'm thinking. Yes, yeah. people. And, and that we have to have a, a form that might be too rooted and rutted to be able to get a, the surface down there. I don't know. I haven't been on it. So we let's. I think walk I think a site that you know, will pretty much yeah. answer everybody's question. As far as the crossing itself, I think it's pretty easy to do, and they've allowed us to do it before. So I don't foresee that it would be a problem. It would just have to be submitted as part of a well. Okay.
Okay. All right. So um, can we go down through the, the concern sheet here? Okay. Unfortunately, I do have to run, but I've read this and I've noted all of the issues. And only, I just want to raise one yeah. monster, monster, monster so that could happen is that let's keep our fingers crossed and hope we get a contractor that will come in and bid on this and be willing to take that abbreviated session in October because it might change our whole dynamic if we can't get that done. Yeah, we need to talk about those. Yeah, about that time. Mm -hmm. we, because if, if we have to do this in one fell swoop next year, we would need to know as soon as possible, you know, to make all kinds of contingent plans for that. So keep your fingers crossed if you know any contractors who want to move some mats. Mm -hmm. You know, we got the work and the money's waiting for us. Mm -hmm. right, sorry. So I just also I want to clarify on this real quick. This was a, this is a starting point based mm -hmm. on all the concerns that I collected from the events that are coming in. Uh, and you know. We've discussed some of these. This is just a starting point, and so everything here, and I need to be able to communicate to yeah. the customer what it is that we are going to be able to do. So this was a yeah. starting point for us to talk. And about. I think one of the other variables is we can present to. I think we can, as a town, say to your customer, "This is what we are going to present to the contractors. Mm -hmm. Whether we find a contractor who will do the job where any of this is acceptable to, and cost efficient to, or even, you know." Or cost prohibitive to mm -hmm. is another issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll do the best we can with it. Thanks, okay, guys. guys. All right, Mike. Thank you. Um, so con right. construction operation dates and times, um, the the quiet hours time. Um, I we've had a discussion with Matt already this morning, and as I pointed out to him, uh, the nine p.m. to nine a.m. is not going to work. Um, I I think it. We need a work time on site for the work days of at least 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And, be, and that's because at that time of year, with darkness starting, we need to get the contractor in there and give him a long enough work day to make it worth going in. Um, that, um, I think, is probably the minimums. Um, we do see this as Monday through Friday only. There will, we don't anticipate that a contractor is going to need to work Saturdays and Sundays. So the only time that um, we don't ever see them working on Sundays, period, um, the only time that they would have to work potentially on Saturdays would be if we ran into a weather issue. Um, and then Saturdays, um, they may need as makeup days, but those would be later in the two construction periods. So I don't think they come into play as far as for weddings and, and other events in the community. Okay, but the 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. is definitely a time period um, that, that we need to look at giving them. Um, and we have done that in other projects. Um, that, that we've had around town. Uh, generally, we try to get them to do 7 to 8 a.m. as their startup time and then start running vehicles and stuff like that from 8 a.m. on. Um, but at least they, they got the guys coming into the site uh, between 7 and 8. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be okay. respectful. Um, so that, that's just addressing that 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. quiet time. Okay. Um, so I don't see that being a problem on the weekends. Okay. I'm going to communicate with them. Yep. Yeah. And then the construction dates themselves. Right now we continue to have a four-month uh, estimated construction of people. Um, we are looking at a start date of October 9th. Um, that would be the start of mobilization, not actual digging. We don't, you know, it's going to take them a while to get the equipment in here get the site set up um, and that we would extend October 9th, October 9th. Mm -hmm. day after Columbus Day. Right? Day after Columbus Day. Uh, that is okay. Columbus Day. Okay. So we're, oh, not sorry, doing September. September. we're not doing September. We're not doing September. Well, we, we need to talk. It's part of this discussion. Mm -hmm. So October 9th, and then we would go to November 21st, okay? And that would be 
where they would be demobilized and off-site for the winter. What was that okay. date? December, November, November. November 21st. Day, right now. Day before Thanksgiving. Day before Thanksgiving. Unless, yeah. unless, yeah. unless yeah. weather is, and then we would have to talk about it if they had hit a week of really heavy rain or whatever. But we'd be looking 8 October, 21 November, and then come back in as soon as the weather allows late April, early May timeframe. We're figuring the beginning of May, May 1st. And the rest of that four month period takes us all the way to July 3rd. Okay. So that's the, for the way that I was approaching it in doing this and with Ryan, that July 3rd was the drop dead date because of the 4th of July, the fact that we've, you know, potentially have this concert thing going, we have fireworks and all of that. So we want them completely clear of the site out of there no later than July 3rd. And, and I think that we probably back that off to the third week of June when we put it out to bid, right? And then do some negotiating from there. That way we, we've given, we've built in a week of flex time for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, because if we give them till July 3rd, they're gonna be looking to July 17th or whatever, okay? So do we have an idea of when they're setting articulated mats? No, well, when they would I, if, if they get mobilized and they don't have weather issues in this fall, they could start placing them this fall. Um, but if they have, if they hit some weather, they, they may just try to grade everything and then stabilize for the winter and then come back and try to lay the mats in the start of the spring. That's We're going to encourage them to try to lay mats as soon as possible. Like Jim was saying, if they do their bid, we'll be able to tell where they've put their money in the bid. So we'll be able to tell, we, we feel that they're probably going to work on the Golden Eagle side of the dam first because it's the easiest to do. And if they can get that grading done, they could potentially get some mats down on that side and get them under cover before the winter. But again, it's it's all a roll of the dice with the weather. And that's our biggest concern. Um, so I guess the question is, can we go beyond the November? If we got good weather and they're laying mats, can we go beyond November 21st? Okay. Same what we do up in the mountain. We're doing construction in February. No, I, I understand that, but there yeah, were some concerns. Cold. Well, but but that impacts water level though, potentially. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that that yeah, we're not I don't think that's gonna hurt it. Okay. All right. If, if we're gonna we be above that, we're gonna be above the in, intake anyways, correct? With yes. the water level? I mean, we're Unless, not dropping it. Like, until they're working on the pond, on the pond side. side. Yeah. Then, then it'll be low. Yeah. But we'll talk about water levels. Okay. Okay. So if we've got some flexibility on November twenty first, that's good. All right. If you've got good weather, we don't have skiers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. So we'll we'll um, we'll that. try to uh, work on a little earlier end date than the July third one when we put it out to measure. Yeah. Okay. Um, the weekend dates we've talked about. Okay, so the the specific dates that Matt had listed here, uh, the two Sunday dates are okay. There's no problem, no work on Sunday, so that's not an issue. The Friday completion by 2 p.m. Again, that it's a weather issue that that we have with it, and we really feel that taking Fridays from the contractor that early in the time period we can we can ask them but um I, we're concerned with with taking those days away just because it's so early in the in the time frame so we we can tell them you got to be done by noon time and move out of there um but that's I'm worried about those dates. Okay, we hear you. Okay. 
Um, the Saturday ones, they shouldn't be working. So those are also okay as far as will be clear. There won't be any work going on. So as far as the Friday weddings? The Friday weddings are, I know you've got them booked and, and we need to. I, I think when, when it comes time to, to get the contractor on site and they're, they're, they're setting up, they're going to be setting up right around this, this first date. The, the, the 10 12 the 12 10, yeah okay so uh i don't especially early on in the project i don't see them really you know, being under the gun and wanting to, to work on saturday so i agree with mark there um most contractors on fridays are trying to shut down a little early anyway uh, just to get their guys on to their weekend so i'm not as concerned about the the 2 p.m date that they or the 2 p.m time as maybe mark is um if we if we told them that you could start at seven and be finished by noon on a Friday, I think <coughs> okay with that. They'll be okay with that. As long as they won't balk at it, I'm I'm fine with it. It's not. I'm just trying to and now having more flexibility on the November twenty first time frame. What we were originally what we originally talked about this morning was potentially having them mobilize a little earlier, not do any work but get equipment here the week. Or, week prior, which would save them some time. Um, but if we've got flexibility on the end date, I was holding November 21st solid. Um, if if we've got some flexibility there, then, then I'm okay with these Friday 2 p.m. Like you said before, it's really going to depend on the weather towards the end. Yeah. Like it always does. Yeah. Um, the, the um, we should have more light those weeks, too, so we should be able to further into the day and we're mobilizing so we're we're moving equipment yeah which means we have light yeah what about uh are, are there any wedding dates on the books for the spring oh yeah mm -hmm. okay. yeah i mean there's it's essentially one every weekend starting the week before memorial day uh and straight through october until except for friday the weekend. Friday. friday's not so much october we get fridays in october because everyone wants the leaves and all that kind of stuff from so September, but Friday, it's pretty much just Saturdays in the spring. Sh shutting down at noon every single Friday during the spring, the spring would be more. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I don't think we've ever sold a Friday in the spring. Uh, we're not selling the harbor right now. If we haven't sold it, we should probably be looking at different wedding venues for the spring. If we yeah, no, have, if we do cool. have active yeah. sales going on. We should be selling them on the golf course. Show. Yeah, we're not, um, we're not selling top spring ball. because it's already full. <laughs> yeah, it's already full. Good. So. The Saturdays are. Well, okay, so, um, well, Saturdays and Sundays are not the issue unless yeah. we run into a time crunch, yeah. and then we would have to try to work with people um, as much as possible. So let's just keep Monday through Friday clean in the spring, and and we'll go. Uh, at this point, we're gonna any any guests that we're talking to now at this point selling our weddings. Right. We are trying to persuade them towards other venues. Right. Yeah. These are pre-sold, so okay. We're dealing with brides that want to have yeah. their wedding in the pre position yeah. when we sold them. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's flexibility to the big things when the guests start, they just won't be here until sure. that's starting at four. So three yeah. thirty yeah. at the latest for sure. For some budget event. So um materials and equipment storage. Um in looking at this, we don't see any storage needs between the arena and the park. So there may there will be traffic and movement. In between the arena and the pond, but we don't need to put any equipment over there um, on a regular basis. Okay. Um, beach storage so, is more problematic. Right. So um, I, I was thinking about this a little bit when I was when I was out there. I, I think um, the contractors are probably going to want to to establish two separate. Um, storage areas 
for equipment, materials, and the ACV. One of them is obviously on, on the beach because that's very mm -hmm. close to the, the south side of the, the, the spillway in that embankment area. So I can see him using that area to, to conduct his operations and store material that he's taken out and bring a material pump it and use that material on that side. While I agree that um, we can probably do away with any storage of materials between the ice arena and the pond, they may want to look at that parking area it's on, the other side. on the other side of the ice arena for a staging area. So they can they can bring in their materials for the for the north side of the embankment, mm -hmm. store them there, right. bring them in in front of the ice arena right. and place them. Right. Are you talking the paved lot? The <clears throat> paved lot. Yeah, we don't want that. You're going to chew that thing up. Putting that heavy equipment through there. So that we, that. you got a lot of the well, two segments of dirt on the right, too, where we put the speed toilets for Alpesa. Yeah, those two, these two lots are probably the best equipment to handle any heavy machinery. They're probably, I don't know, 100 feet by 50. And I'm good with it if you guys want to redo the pavement. But <laughs> well, that's what we have them do is to great. I love I'm that. Coming to the all our side, the first driveway into that parking. Yeah. As soon as you pull into that driveway, there's uh, the, the, the the large dirt section, the the little island of trees. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, that brings people around. And that's it. We were also talking to them um, about utilizing our trolley in a different way. Uh, so we're trying to work with them to find out, you know, where is it you guys are saying Decorate now. the trolley. Yeah, now in, in the new one, <laughs> yeah. uh, most of the guests, oddly enough, that we're dealing with are coming from the new one. Yeah, they walk out. And so they normally the walk down the beach. This, this gray shaded mm -hmm. area is storage area. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the, I don't know that we're going to need all of that, Tim. Okay. So, so we're going to, we're definitely going to use the area above the 43 yep. there. That's the beach area. Yeah. And then we won't come to the south and the east any more than we have to. I think we can probably cut it off. We can probably cut it off somewhere like right around here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then so you'll be able to come out, go over the over by the uh, playground. playground, down the path across the little wooden bridge, mm -hmm. and then over yeah. to the front. Yeah. Okay. And then so that, that would work. The but road, this, yeah. As you mentioned, where would you say the road is in really good shape too? I kind of drew it in. I kind of drew it in here. Yeah. Probably just past where this park just is. Past, yeah. Just past the apple so, tree. <laughs> just um, past the yeah. <laughs> so the So when people walk in, this is really the area where of greatest concern. Yes. And, and nothing's going to be stored around that apple tree for the Delcy. That's right, because so here's the apple tree. No, it goes up. We're trying to keep everything beach side of is the footprint. This yeah. is the area that's going to be the most torn on. Where's the, um, park? Is the parking on this side? The parking's here. Yeah, uh, here parking's like, like kind of drew it in here. And then say in this area. So that you come, you come in, that's your road. In this area right here is the parking. I would say just past the parking is where it's a right. issue. Mm -hmm. okay. So where that little footbridge comes down, if we kept it downhill of the footbridge, as much at least through wedding season, and yeah. then I would, if there's going to be stuff visible from there, I would just want to address some sort of fencing like we discussed and cut up time that we can have it for you. Well, we'll have to have a control fence there because because we don't want anybody to go into the beach area at all. Yeah, so whatever area between the beach and the footbridge that they need for storage, we'll just draw the line with the fence yeah. and control it that way. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the fence. Yeah, so uh, we did a little bit of research on the fencing, and, and we did see uh, a, a similar number, $6 per lineal foot. That was for either a four-foot or a five-foot tall um, uh, mesh fence. But it wasn't, it wasn't for the fence, it was for the mesh itself. You still need a fence in which to, to put it on. Um, if you're looking to have the fence to block um, People viewing the site itself when you have materials you know stacked up 10 feet 12 feet in the air you're going to need a fence that might be seven eight feet tall if, if you're talking about that height the screen itself could be 10 to 12 dollars per linear foot the fence itself for an eight foot tall fence with with the posts in the ground and concrete and something that's permanent that will will withstand all the, the wind forces that you have against that mesh, uh, that could be 25 to 30 bucks a linear foot. So you could be talking $40 per foot for this screen fence. And if you're just looking to block the beach view, the beach storage view from the, the pergola and from that site, that's about 150 feet. Uh, so that that could be right there about six or seven thousand dollars just in, in fence materials, and, stuff. Um, and you know that that's the only location. Well, and then Matt, you had you had voiced the concern of the view of the beach area from Town Square. That's so, what, that's that's probably the number two concern. I'm right. Thinking. No. Right. Understood. So we're talking about probably doubling mm -hmm. that. So we'd be in the twelve to fifteen thousand range. For the fence, so we just—I mean, we can look at putting that in as part of the bid, but we have to be ready for for it to be a pretty expensive thing. I mean, we could be part of that. I mean, I always find what I need to print on. So you know, when it comes to printing and custom and, and pushing guys, I got guys in my back pocket I push all the time. 
Um, so I, I do think we can get that cost down significantly. Matt, where do you envision? I've got the 150 foot fence. Where is the town square fence? The one that Mark was just talking about? Where would that fence be located? Yeah. Sure it was. Easiest way to describe it would be the water's edge. Mm -hmm. So people seeing it, people seeing it this way. So people hanging out at town square, looking across and just seeing construction. So something around here, and then the other one would be the cutoff where the customers walking. Oh, well. on the beach, this side. Yeah. You know, so people having their their dinner, you know, their rehearsal dinner at at a Mexican place or something, and they look out the window and all they see is construction. Mm -hmm. Now I know even especially from that second floor, you're never gonna block it all. Uh, and, and I think they get that too. It's just some level of attempting to mitigate it and get rid of that as well. So you're talking this hill right now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Something in that line and then cut off here. And I think, so, you know, like I said, like I said, but, you want but to it mesh, could be mesh there. Well, we need, more. yeah, we need to, no, this needs to be meshed too, only because the bride is coming down here. All the bride, almost all the bride are going to come yeah. down that way. So I, I'm seeing uh, quantities of 400, 450, and you know, by that I'll buy 40 feet. So you're just 40 dollars per foot. So 15 to 20 thousand or something. Like that. So you know, like I said, printed and custom is the high end, uh, and obviously the preferred. But gray and green, or two, those are constraints. But a chain link fence with a bunch of stuff behind it. I guarantee I'm going to be given thousands of dollars of refunds back. So uh, that's the water's number one concern. The view of construction is number two. Okay. So is this something that uh, the project is going to pay for? Should we put this as an alternate? So I, I think we do it as an ad alternate and see what the what the price is and see where we are budget wise. Are there a lot of people that have the reception of I don't know it's off my head because we don't always do their rehearsal dinners uh, unless they ask. I know too. a lot of the rehearsal dinners go on at the golf course. Golf course, coyote, all that kind of stuff. But the big yeah, thing is that they do either way come, you know, whether it's rehearsal or not, they're in town square playing with kids, going to the bar, wherever the kids shopping, you know, using town square as it's intended to use. They'll all be there at some point. Now for the rest of the control measures so so we've got this screens um sections mm -hmm. here and that's only to hide the staging area for the materials and the right. Equipment. right yeah it's just this, trying to reduce that okay. the rest of it so we're going to have we're not going to use orange but we're going to have some sort of snow fence type material that's right? just a that, it's a physical barrier that's going to go at the end of the bridge, it's going to go, it's basically going to, it's going to be here, right? Yep. It's going to, it's going to go, let's say that we end the screening somewhere in here. It's going to, all of this, all of that is going to be cordoned off so that people can't get access into the site. And I don't see a reason why that needs to be. No, that doesn't need to be yeah. fancy, but it but it's going to be there, yeah. and and we're going to have this physical barrier, yeah. right? And and that includes here in Town Square. Now there in, in Town Square, if what you about were to look one? at another? Then I would say that would be this one. Here, another too? location we'd want to investigate, just from the Town Square customer perspective. Okay. I see. Is this spring? That's going to be hard to keep people, especially because that if you're planning to do the Golden Eagle side um, early in the year, like this year, yeah, then the town side is going to be in the spring, and you're going to be traveling from that staging area mm -hmm. behind the ice arena, right in front of the gazebo. Mm -hmm. So that area from it's the corner of the Mulligans yeah, to the corner of the athletic center. Actually. We're gonna have an issue there. Yeah, and I keeping people out. Yeah, I see it look somewhat easy. Right. Yeah. So we're gonna to have to kind of plan where we where we put this screening mm -hmm. up. Um, because and the and the use of the gazebo, I mean I think they could probably seal it off on the weekends 
but, but even that might be problematic yeah. when they're working on the stone walkway up here. Use of the gazebo while we're doing that. I, I'm not sure that that's doable. Yeah, so the Memorial, the Memorial Day, Day concert. The, the Memorial Day concert, where yeah, there's no that. casting for Kirby, there's there's nothing next year on Memorial Day weekend. Mm, I don't know. Like, yeah, well, not nothing. I wouldn't but, say that because you can take some of this down. You can take some of it down, but the you know, at least have casting for Kirby on the bank on the on WCI land. You could probably do a little walk. Yeah, you probably could stop it right at the boat dock. Yeah. Or yeah. Something probably along those could, lines. Along, yeah. So we could have a reduced one, but it's on water level. But it, but that, again, it depends on if they're working on the short side. But. Yeah. But if they're if they're trying to access this side and they're running equipment along that access road there, having a fence of, or a barrier of any kind is gonna slow them down, even if it's gated. So mm -hmm. maybe something this direction to keep people that are in the square away from this construct construction traffic here. but can they could on the weekends can they put yes can they put it up here yes. so that they can use a gazebo yes. and stuff just yeah. swing it in so we'll just swing it, it but during the week yeah. the gazebo like yeah. from the corner of the off. ice arena yeah. to the nordic center there's going to be a fence in between there and the gazebo will be cordoned off Put on whole horseshoe in the view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Won't be a way around that. Nope. There's no way around that. So we can try to pretty fly that the fence from the town square side. Yeah. They, um, but they'll be able to take this down. Yeah. So you, you won't. It won't be so, as obtrusive. It's only going to be what's that? 50, 75 feet mm -hmm. there from the corner of the Nordic Center. So the water, so now that we've started talking about spring, I mean, I really appreciate what you did here, Matt, of identifying the, con the constraints of you know what the concerns were here. We need to do this for the spring, yeah. You can show what it's a longer dates period, are. Yeah. yeah. Because I mean, if we go out to bid and they're bidding on just these being the constraints, we need to know are we going to go into the spring have this same kind of a issue? Or, or but, we're but you don't, things. you don't have any Fridays. No Friday. No, no, so I think it was Sunday. We do too. have we do have the weekends. We have the Memorial Day celebration. We have some of our our you know our public and our yeah. our citizens have certain celebrations that we have in the spring that we need to be conscious of. And if we at least know what the what those could be coming up, we could plan for those. Yeah, um, the contractor should be taking the same like Memorial Day weekend off. They won't work. Yeah, no look. The, so so I think we'll be okay. Yeah, but. We should put it on a calendar. Yeah, we should have warriors and. Can I take our email? Second week of June, I think. Yeah, yeah. In fact, the first four weeks of GRC at least. GRC. Yeah, we've got the whole start of camps that we're going to be able to camps. off. Yeah. Our boats aren't going to be able to start. Boats, camps. Aren't going to be able to start with half the budget less for boats, you know, because we're just going to have a reduced season. Would we be able to operate the boats out of the boat launch area on WCI land? There, there, there may not be water. the water's going to be going up and down. You know. Yeah, well, we need to just do a sheet on that too. Yeah. From the WCI. Jim, how's the, the road to the access road along the right side? That? That, that's in good. Uh, we have to keep in mind that that is emergency access because they have to be able to get the ladder all the way down into Town Square. So we have to keep that in mind. So they could use it to uh, transport, they just can't park there. Right, right. right. But that is in, uh, I don't foresee that that's going to need any type of reinforcement. I'm just worried about the impact on the bricks um, from the ice arena entrance to the Nordic Center. Oh, yeah. With yeah. the heavy equipment. 
because it's going to be a bulldozer. And there's going to be a, probably. I mean, if you're not pulling out, pulling those stones out, you're going to have to at least buy with it and make a. Right. Maybe, yeah, maybe maybe that's the cheapest way I've ever protected them. Uh, it's either they, it's either you just plan on screwing them up, or you put in some sort of reinforcement over the top of them. Yeah, well, the or, or they take them out, that. or they take them out and replace them. Yeah, that's going to be their contract. Yeah. If if they even decide to want to have another stadium, we allow them to have another stadium on that side. Right. Then I guess is what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only place you're going to have problems is behind you guys. From the softness of the ground standpoint, or mm -hmm. yeah, it's a drainage thing. Well, around that front edge. I know how the place was built, and I know what is under there. So, <laughs> okay, water level is that another issue? Um, so, water normal high water is or normal water is out of the crest is uh, fourteen seventy five point three. Yeah. And um, we are proposing to take it down right now to 1473, uh, but could go, go down as far as 1470 when they are working on the, the pond side and including the ACV. So there's a potential for a five foot drop when they're working in that uh, pond main on the pond side. Uh, beyond that, um, We've allowed them to reduce it about two feet, two and a half feet, just to control the amount of water that uh, may come from a, from a storm. So, um, take a couple boards out uh, while they're working, and then if they see weather coming, put some boards in or just leave them out and use the storage in the pond to handle the, the, the water that's coming through. The last thing they want is for the water levels to get so high that it's going to impact what they've already done or have the potential to spill over into the bank. So, five feet is probably what I see the maximum, and it's going to be a limited time when they're constructing the upstream. Bank. And we should be able to schedule that yeah. so that it's yeah. not. What level was it at all spring? So can that uh, approximately 1472 and a half. So Matt's got a picture. So account. from a lane and 1472 and a half. So it would be three feet, roughly three feet lower than full pond. At the worst case scenario. Right. That's no, what no, it was no, this spring. Five, at the, five feet less than full pond. At the worst case. That's the worst, the worst case. case. It's the lowest. Your, your, your picture okay. is. Okay. So he said 1472.5 was that, where we had it. That's what you asked me about spring. Time. Spring, this whole spring. Yeah. Yes, and that is this that this is picture. right around yeah. where proposed. We're proposing. Proposed during, during, during construction. During construction. It's half foot higher. Than where it was during the spring. That's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. But from like I said, from what he so said, that's, that's the best news that's, ever. It's a half foot higher than that picture. Because this is manageable. They're okay with this. And you can tell them that that proposed yeah. is half foot higher. Now, if we're going to see a rain event or anything like that, well, well, first of all, you're like probably moving inside that's anyways. Right. But um, right. Yeah. Maximum. But if there is, if there's going to be a significant rain event, then right. I've got to lower the pond a bit. Yep. And then. Um, just like it uh, during construction, I don't foresee the maintenance of the pond level any different than it is in it at any other time. You know, other than we're not going to be full pond, we're just going to be down a couple of feet. Correct. Right. But it's not going to fluctuate. That's it's a big. That's a big one for us to talk to. Yeah. Huge one for us about. Yeah. And that's a big one that we have put forth in front of them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And the lowest, we really foresee the lowest levels at the 1470 being probably the spring. And we can manage yeah. that. We can manage that during the week. And the, the issue is they're going to have to grout those rocks back in place. So we're going to have to make sure that his time frame is not going to interfere with it. Yeah. 
Yeah, we would put the next kettle on the gym. Those well, well and, but I, I really, you know, do it the same way you did it this time. Give them the worst case and then fill them back up. Okay. My side was pathways. Yeah, the pathways. Um, I, I just. I'd like to go walk it if people have a minute to do that. Yeah. Because we need to understand what we're going to do. And then, like I said, moving forward, I think we'll just want to stay in communication dealing with signs and maps yeah. to yeah. try to reduce the. <coughs> it seems like overkill, but I think it'll be better than not. Right. So our. We, um, we are still on schedule for the 90% drawings to be done in June, in June and 100% drawings in August. Um, once we do see that um, DES will approve those in August so that we would be able to put it out to bid in September. You know, it's that they have a 30 day period in which to say, yes, we're going to do the comments or everything. So, okay. Um, they could take as long as those 30 days, but um, since we've been in contact with the Dan Bureau, the, the hope is that they will kind of run the interference for us and help okay. us with a uh, quick review turnaround. Okay. Um, a lot's going to, a lot's going to, Going to come out of the 75 percent review yeah uh, that's why we want to send this in after the meeting today yeah uh, so we take care of all those issues they may have when we submit the final comments so so if they approve this the way that it is then we're on it we're in very yeah, good shape, right uh, this still needs to show the uh the crossing so let me know what you guys uh, decide about that location I want to add that in before we submit the 75%. Okay. I want to take you. Well, everybody's going to go to the same spot, I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, where are we going to go? You want to go around to that? Do the go to town square? Walk it from there. Um, it's easier to, if you park out right along on top of the culvert there, just so the silver, silver fox. Okay. Now we'll right. walk down we'll the walk It's a lot shorter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're in charge. Oh, I'm going to adjourn our, our meeting yes. at quarter after 11. Okay. Good.